What's up? I just want to give you a quick heads up. When I'm talking in this clip, my voice is distorted, so I want to make sure you're able to adjust the volume for your ears or whatever, make sure they don't hurt. But the conversation is too good for you not to hear it, so we went ahead and made the clip anyway. This is from episode four of No Labels Necessary. The future episodes are just fine audio-wise. Check this out. The information is too good to miss. Does pre-release marketing matter anymore? Someone asked us that, and... I, obviously, we just talked about three, three yeah. releases. You know what I'm saying? Like from Taylor Swift and Drake, and then you talk about Billy McFarlane doing this for this this show. Pre-release marketing, one thousand percent matters. But I think what we are experiencing is we're in a space where you also can get amazing results without pre-release marketing. Yeah, because one, we know a song could be out a year, two years before it has this pop moment. So if it did have a pre-release, it didn't probably have much of an effect um, in regard to that. But two, we see we're in a space where you can have a song on TikTok. You just drop a, a, a snippet and then the snippet goes so crazy and it has nothing to do with your pre-release. And it's going to be successful as long as you understand how to take that energy and drive it into the song. Yeah. Right. Whether that's about to be a pre-release, but then and that same thing can happen right after you drop the song. So TikTok has like created this space where you don't need a pre-release to find massive success, right? As a, I mean, let's, let's be real about the size of artists that this applies to as well, as well right? Pre-release marketing actually probably applies a lot less for our indie artists. Yeah, 100%. Like an indie artist without views. We got to start putting respect on indie artists' name. Taylor Swift is indie, bro. You know what I mean? It's not the, you know, bad run these indie. So, a smaller, a upcoming artist yeah, with a smaller indies. fan base. Yes. <laughs> yes. A, a smaller fan base. Your pre-release marketing probably isn't going to be seen by enough people and experienced mm -hmm. by enough people to actually have an impact anyway. Yeah. Right. So you can't control a narrative and, and, and behavior, but you can still do content ahead of time. Yeah. Especially through a platform like TikTok to just test and see interactions to gauge how you're going to go about your full blown marketing once the song comes out. That's one thing. And then two, I mean, we already know like TikTok is is roulette too in some ways. Yeah. Right? You might have that massive moment just for from a teaser being posted. But the biggest thing y'all need to do if you drop something ahead of time and it takes off like once you start putting stuff out you better be ready to drop that don't do the the song ain't nowhere near ready and i don't have the ability to complete it like quickly if it takes off because if it takes off and you get a big moment and you don't drop that thing until two months from now because you had to complete the song and didn't know what to do you're gonna lose so much momentum and you cannot buy that momentum i don't care what you think, how much money you think goes into it, the record labels. Record labels have money, but they don't have momentum. They yeah. can give, they can spend money to increase the possibility that momentum occurs, but they can't just buy it and guarantee it. Yeah, There's nothing more valuable than that, and that's why you know, pre-release strategies don't matter as much as they used to, because TikTok has just changed that landscape. Yeah, I mean, I think going back to the, the things we said earlier about uh, the three C's, the what was it, creativity, consistency, conversation controversy, slash controversy, slash, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's like, as a smaller artist, like you don't have enough market space to where people even care to see like what your narrative is. Unless like the the creative element of it is just so attention grabbing that it becomes like your breakthrough moment. Um, I can't think of a, a specific artist off top, but it's like it, it'd be the M tripling type thing. Exactly, right? yeah, it's a great example. Yeah, so something like that. Or like I, I, I was thinking about like Doja Cat move. You know what I'm saying, but I don't think it was pre rollout. Uh, it it wasn't pre rollout. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was yeah. out then. But yeah. that's still a good example of just a narrative that can that that can cause people to care who don't already know about you. Yeah, because that's what you're getting at. Yeah, a narrative needs to be interesting enough in itself that even people who don't know about you will pay attention. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's like, you got to really, I don't know, I feel like, you know, probably because of resources, a lot of the rising in these falls, so the traditional stuff, I'm going to post a couple snippets. Maybe I'll do a live, a little premiere. You know what I'm saying? And even that works, like, if you have a small audience, right? Like, you just can't expect massive results from it. But I always look at pre-releases are more about, more about getting your current fans excited than mm -hmm. gaining new fans when you're a small artist. 
once you're a bigger artist, it's, it's both really like you are trying to get your current fans excited, but you're trying to create so much of a conversation that new people start paying attention to it as well. Exactly. And so it's, it's very hard to have the spillover effect as a small artist because, you know, it's like there's 100 people that may, well, maybe there's 100 people that care about you. And it's great. Those people, you should want those people to care about you. But they're not enough. They're not enough to spill it over into a bigger conversation unless some lucky shit happens. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, right. I think it's, it's, it's important with the right objective in mind. You know what I'm saying? No, that's a fact. And you say something that's really important, actually, how your pre release is something. That could be used as a vehicle for your current fan base. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't mean you don't need to do it. I typically tend to think about growth yeah. in general, but you could 100% could do a great pre-release and could be a moment in time. So I also think about the experience for fans who are following you in that moment. So they have something to remember the yeah. way you did that pre-release. And then two, a cataloging for fans in yes. the future. Yeah. Right. So they yep. can go back and say, oh, snap, that was so dope. I wish I was experiencing it in real time. And make sure I see the next one. Exactly. Yeah. So that is something to do and you can get value from it. But just from the short term thought thinking of, hey, I'm just trying to make this track do the numbers, pre release might not have an impact. And that's actually one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of just people in general, like in, in any t type of marketing, um, but especially artists in this case, they, make the mistake of applying the right marketing tactics to the wrong result. It's like, oh, this didn't give me streams. Well, if you understood what well, was supposed to be wh where you were in your, your career, this is not going to give you streams, yeah. but it is extremely valuable for building that catalog in the future for creating that relationship with the fans. And I know you can't feel it as much right now, but it is happening yeah. and you have to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and it's going to explode at some point down the road but when you have that expectation oh man it didn't give me more streams which is what most artists are looking for to start yeah. right you start to devalue things that are actually really valuable behaviors and habits to have just because they don't have that result so yeah. I, I think a lot of artists when i say it that way probably get i don't know they probably start off <laughs> in a weird way better and having a ho more holistic view of the right type of actions to take, but they almost get beaten into becoming the monotonous same type of artist marketers just because it's like, yo, that didn't give me this result. That didn't give me a result. That cool creative idea that I had didn't give me anything. And next thing you know, it's like, well, let me just do this because this is moving the needle forward. Mm -hmm. Let me create this TikTok video that's copying this exact trend. Or let me just run this ad of this of this style because they at least give me a number. And you just got rid of all the shit that made you unique because they weren't giving you quick enough results. Yeah, It's yeah. like a marathon almost. You, you have to have the perseverance to stay you <laughs> until that shit works. That's what it is. If you've gotten any value from the content on our channel, I want you to stop and think about how much value is that worth in money? This is the same channel and content that's brought value to so many people who are going to do big things in the industry, but we don't want to charge you anything except for a simple donation in the form of a click of that subscription button. So please click that subscribe button and we're gonna keep giving you that value again and again and again. Every sub helps. Now back to the content. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think too, it's kind of like having the muscle be strong enough to handle doing all of it at the same time, you know? Oh, that's a whole another thing. Yeah, yeah. a whole another thing. Cause it's yeah. like, it's like, yeah, all, all these things are gonna make all the other number driving stuff work better. But I, I think it speaks more too, like artists of like a Teleswift, caliber or like a Drake caliber like they're they're not I don't I wouldn't say they don't care about streaming but I don't mm -hmm. think they care about streaming as much as the rising indie community because they have so many other ways to flip it it could be like hey I could maybe not do I don't know x amount of hundreds of millions of streams here which would be a little bit off brand for me but this campaign I ran got this whole other industry interested in me and they about to drop a 50 million dollar bag on me to come host an event or put together mm -hmm. some type of thing right so Kind of like you were saying, like there's a different KPI attached to the campaign result at that level than just streams going up. Because when you Drake, you're 21 Savage, you Taylor Swift, you know your streams are gonna jump up. Like it's, it's like you don't know how much, maybe right? That yeah. part is still 
um, I guess unknown, but like you know what's going to happen versus like the smaller rising artists, they don't know if what they do is going to make the streams go up. So that's all they hyper focus on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the shit that make my streams go up. And that kind of goes back to like what I, I was saying a couple episodes ago, but I, I think it goes back to like how long you think you're going to be in the game. Yep. If you feel like you're not going to be here for long, then you're right. All this shit's a waste of your time. Go ahead, grab the yeah. bag. Yeah, exactly. Get what you got to do, build it up, have fun in the moment. But if you feel like you're going to be here for three, five, seven, ten years plus, right, then it, there really is no fail in doing it because you're setting the foundation up for the next mm-hmm. thing to work a little bit better and then the next thing to work a little bit better. And yep. then, boom, like you say, you pop and you have this whole catalog of experiences that you put people through to make them go, damn, I wish I was there for that. But this next one, I'm going to make sure I stick around for it. You know, like I want to see what he, what he or she has coming next. And that's just as important, you know what I'm saying? Then like, oh, like your streams went up 30%, you yep. know what I'm saying? Because you you had a successful Instagram ad or some mm-hmm. shit like that. Yep. It's the it's the brand impact of giving great value every time I interact with your brand. Yeah. It's like, oh, Kanye is going to do another concert. You know that there's going to be some interesting production value when he goes on tour. Yeah. Right. We saw him do the stage. We saw him do the pyramid with the uh, what was that Jesus album, right? And then yeah. the mask yeah. and all that stuff, and Jesus walking down and all that stuff, right? So you think, oh, when he does something, you know that it's going to be well thought out, right? You see that with a Travis. You you see that literally with a YouTuber, right? It's like, oh, I really laughed when I watched that video. Next time I see their face pop up, I know it's probably going to be funny, even if I don't know about the subject that they're talking yeah. about. So I'm just going to watch it anyway. I'm willing to give it a chance. I'm willing to give yeah. it a chance. And that's called brand equity right there. Yeah. Now I'm going to go just because it's you. I'm going to wear this shirt just because you're associated with the shirt, whatever, just because because you gave me that experience. So that's really what you're trying to do as an artist. Like, how can you maximize that impact? But of course, starting off, like you said, can you do it all at once? It is hard. We, that's we that's yeah. part of the game. That's, yeah. that's just it's not going to deny that. It is hard. But you also touched on artists at a different level, not necessarily caring about streams, but I think it's still caring about success. Yeah. Right? It's like we have to maintain the perception of perception of success in our main thing, all right? So LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, they talk about that, like keep the main thing the main thing. They know this is the thing that drives how they're seen in all these other industries, all right? So I got to keep winning at basketball. I can't like win 30% of my games season after season because now I'm not looked at LeBron. LeBron's not the GOAT. He's not this character anymore. I got to get to the playoffs. I got to put up these numbers at least and then make it seem like it's the team's fault. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I got to, you know, get another championship because it makes even, uh, and and it's funny enough, even though they probably make, they're better compensated than many artists, right? When we think about the NBA, still most of their money just like artists, doesn't come from their main thing. Mm-hmm. The ones who are at the top, right? Because you flip that brand that comes with greatness. It's, it's the brand of greatness. Man, yeah. that's, a, that's a hell of a brand. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you know Tom Brady got like a $300 million contract just to be like a sportscaster yeah. or whatever. It might have been $600 mil. Like It's one of, matter of fact, let me see real quick. Hold up, real quick. It's Damn, it's a hundred hold million. Up. Tom Brady contract. I don't even think I know uh, what Tom Brady sounds like. What do they, <laughs> what do they call it? Like a sportscaster or something? Yeah, a sports broadcaster. Oh, a sportscaster. A 10-year deal for 375, right? And he gets this deal before he even retires. Before he even retires. Why? Because people just know, hey, I'm going to have the GOAT on my station. All right? I know I'm going to be able to flip that somehow. Yeah. I just need the rights. All right? So a hell of a lot of t-shirts. But, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, facts. So yeah, the brand of greatness, man, is uh is is very interesting though. Um, and, and so like you said, it's like yeah, I care about streams, direct fans, and building that fan base, kind of come up. And then I, if I get there at the top, hey, some of these streams can be fake for all I care. Mm-hmm. I just need the perception to be that I am successful and I'm one of the one of the people on that level, whatever that level is for that perceived artist. So I got to maintain that image. Yeah, that's all it is. Which is, you know, it's a different game. Sounds like the same game, but it's a, it's, a, it's a totally different game. Yeah, two completely different muscles. Hey, for real. 
Appreciate you watching. Fun fact, every time you soak up one of these gems, you get a little bit smarter from these clips. So if you wanna be a gem seeker, collect all the gems, keep watching. I'll see you in the next clip.